Okay, hi. So I said I would do this, I think, like a year ago or something, but I've been um, with my brain and dealing with it. And so behind me is my monitor. Um, and I have decided to try again. Um, finally, after feeling really bad about not completing it um, and beating myself up and telling myself what's the point of it all, um, yeah, part of what has sparked me trying again with this is actually just attending a workshop of mental health and watching it grow personally in my community in Singapore. Um, the There were little groups that broke off and everyone was, was shy because it really is confronting to start talking about mental health, especially as an Asian, and I'm still like a bit shaky from it. Um, but when the ice did break, I am hearing the same stories of, you know, similar things that I went through when I was young, um, 10 years ago. So I'm 27 and I heard 17 year olds talk about similar pains um, in a new way, in a new reality, in a new, you know, platform, the internet, or, you know, there, there are new standards, uh, there are new things, but, you know, mental health is a constant battle and I have trying, I have, you know, tried, I guess, to keep fighting it the way I can uh, on Instagram or my writing or my art. Um, and I do want to try and keep up this YouTube work as well. I have started a small group that has been running for some time called Aya ADHD. Um, and I hope for it to hold Asians who have ADHD or suspect that they have ADHD. And also personally, I am going through an assessment for autism, which is very understudied when it comes to Asian women uh, and women in general. It's been uphill and I have been pretty confronted with a lot of like memories of past trauma and trying to work through that and rewriting a lot of things I learned in my family and my community. Uh, so yeah, that is the two minute long context of why I haven't been on YouTube for a bit. So now we're going to go to what the goal and what I want to try and stick to and finish today of the video is. So today I would like to finally do start, complete, finish, I don't know, I'm just going to redo it from the get-go, um, about the adult ADHD self-report scales, uh, also known as the ASRS. And this is stuff I'm getting from the Harvard Medical website and I have or will find the willpower to put it onto my website if you need a printout or to read it. And I hope that I'm speaking clearly enough so that if you can't watch a video without subtitles like me, you can see it on the bottom and follow as well. Okay, so very, very quickly. So now there are a few iterations of the ASRS5. It has been updated with new questions and new options, but I'm going to start this video project series ball, I don't know, Rolling with just a basic number one checklist, um, the one with WHO, which is the World Health Organization. So this was in 2003, it has been updated in 2017, I think. And sorry about the clicking sounds, I can't be asked to overthink about how to remove that because it's taken me a lot to get here and produce this uh, video. So it's been updated in September of 2017 and uh, I think 20, I can't remember. I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to say it because I'm not sure. I'm not sure I want to say it. So I will do a video of those updates as well. But to start with the basics, we're going to do the initial self-assessment for adult ADHD. Okay, so you have two parts to complete in the self-assessment called part A and part B. Um, of the symptom checklist, you're supposed to mark an X in the box that mostly close, the most closely represents the frequency of occurrence of each of these symptoms. Now, uh, well, there's the results stuff. Mm, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so we're just gonna, I'm just gonna go into it because if I end up reading you the instructions, then I'll be too stressed out about editing and then I will never get this up. And that will be sad because I do want to help people. And this is something that a lot of people have been like talking about or discussing within my little tiny Facebook group. And, you know, this resource helps in a little way. So, 
Now, your five options are never rarely, sometimes, often, and very often. I said this before in my previous video. Um, I am a year older now, more chill, I think. I don't know, I might be more hyperactive next year. So this is more zen, um, high. Um, sometimes I bounce off the walls. Okay, so for the first statement, so I'm going to leave the options on the bottom of the video so that you can remember like where it's at. And I'm also going to link a PDF for you to print it out if you want to follow along with the video and fill it up. Um, whatever you need. Okay, so number one. How often do you have trouble wrapping up the final details of a project once the challenging parts have been done? Number two, how often do you have difficulty getting things in order when you have to do a task that requires organization? Number three, how often do you have problems remembering appointments or obligations? Number four, when you have a task that requires a lot of thought, how often do you avoid or delay getting started? Number five, how often do you fidget or squirm with your hands or feet when you have to sit down for a long time? Number six, how often do you feel overly active and compelled to do things like you were driven by a motor? Number seven, how often do you make careless mistakes when you have to work on a boring or a difficult project? Number eight, how often do you have difficulty keeping your attention when you are doing boring or repetitive work? Number nine. How often do you have difficulty concentrating on what people say to you even when they are speaking to you directly? Number 10. How often do you misplace or have difficulty finding things at home or at work? Number 11. How often are you distracted by activity or noise around you? Number 12. How often do you leave your seat in meetings or other situations in which you are expected to remain seated? Number 13. How often do you feel restless or fidgety? Number 14. How often do you have difficulty unwinding and relaxing when you have time to yourself? Number 15. How often do you find yourself talking too much when you are in social situations? Number 16. When you're in a conversation, how often do you find yourself finishing the sentences of people you are talking to before they can finish talking themselves? Number 17. How often do you have difficulty waiting your turn in situations when turn taking is required? Number 18. How often do you interrupt others when they are busy? So, some of these statements, most of these statements, hit hard personally for me. And um, if you didn't like check all the boxes or remember to fill in your X's on never really, sometimes often and very often, but you relate heavily to it, then, you know, I recommend um, getting help or, or resources or therapy or medication, whichever works for you to heal. Um, and I hope just by this video, um, you don't feel so alone, uh, especially if you are Asian. Um, and um, that you know that it, it was not your fault. It wasn't that something was wrong with you or you lacked something or you just could not adult or could not you know human perfectly that it's actually very real um it's not a myth um and you can be either hyperactive or distracted not all adhd people are like you know the the, the scrap guy in ice age um and not you know all adhd uh, adhd people speak constantly and a lot and there's quiet ADHD as well. Um, and it's also very hard to spot um, in, in girls because it presents less um, obviously, I guess. And, and, it, and you know, um, it's, 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 very, it's very common to be dismissed, especially where I grew up and where I come from, as just being hyperactive uh, as much as being depressed, 
is just being sad. Um, and those are, you know, kind of trivialized sometimes. And yeah, so I hope this video helps you. Um, I will now try to put the PDF into my website, which I haven't touched because I have felt rejection sensitive dysphoria, uh, which I will cover hopefully in the future. But this is a start. Um, and I realize it's always just me trying to come back, trying to keep kicking and keep swimming. So maybe that, that statement will always just be, and that's, and that's okay. And you're okay. And you know, I hope you feel seen and heard and counted and, and not, not like you have, you know, something wrong with you because there's nothing wrong with you. You're just neurodiverse, which isn't bad at all. And yeah, take care. Uh, try to go a bit slower for today's video and like really like slow down the pace so that hopefully you can follow it. Um, I watch most of my YouTube videos on 2x speed with subtitles sometimes. So whatever works for you. Um, yeah. And I want to cover the updates on the other statements uh, in the week to come or the next day or the next month or the next year. At this point, I do not know. Um, but I promise to keep trying so that I hope I help others with this stuff and navigate it along the way. Um, I understand treatment is expensive, so I hope these resources help you. Uh, and yeah, see you soon and take care.